reaction to Aaron Rodgers on SportsCenter. It was big. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Um, he said something in there that I thought was interesting. He said that it's not about Jordan Love, you know, and then he said his whole thing about a lot of things went into motion. I threw a monkey wrench. I don't think he has a problem with Jordan Love. I'll be honest with you. Jordan Love, the person. I don't think he has an issue at all. Probably a good kid, loves to be around him. But I think he has a problem with what Jordan Love represents. And what Jordan Love represents is a person who could possibly or was at least drafted to replace him the same way he was drafted to replace Favre. And I don't think he wants to go out the same way his predecessor did. But that's neither here nor there. That's neither here nor there because it's the topic that really needs to be discussed is that he praised everybody but the front office and said there's a problem with culture. See, now when you're talking about culture, it's kind of a slippery slope because Gutekunst has been there since 97 as an intern. I think he knows about the culture of Green Bay. He's been there seven years or eight years more than, uh, than Aaron Rodgers has been. And often that culture is that everybody will be replaced one day. So you have to be ready and prepared for anybody to be replaced on any day. It's kind of a problem. It's kind of a problem because Rodgers is saying, I'm not just anybody. And your culture is that you want me to put on my t-shirt, put my sandwich in my brown paper bag and just eat my lunch and go play ball. And essentially that's what reports by Stephen A. Smith that they essentially told Aaron Rodgers to do that. And that's not acceptable because you have a situation where egos get into play. You have the huge ego of the Green Bay Packers saying, this is how we have always done stuff. Then you have the ego of Aaron Rodgers saying, this is not how things are going to be done anymore. So the question becomes, how do you go big on big? That's the question. And that's compromise. And the compromise is simply going up to him and saying, I understand you're not a machine, you're not a robot, you're not some inanimate object that just plays football. You are a human with emotions. And I understand these things happen. I'm not saying that they were wrong for picking Jordan Love or any of those things. This is just simply what they need to do. I need to ask him, what's the price? What's the price to make you come back? And be prepared that that price may not simply be monetary. It quite possibly be, could, could be getting rid of somebody in your organization. And I'm not saying you have to bend over backwards, but you have to hear him and say, what's the price for you to come back and play? Because you're way too close to the promised land to let Rodgers, your Hall of Fame MVP reigning quarterback, leave without putting up some sort of a fight. I think the Packers are at a position to where they have to realize just how bad they've messed up. Um, with Aaron Rodgers' interview, initially I was like, okay, he's saying a lot, but he's not saying too much. Um, and then once I really, you know, clued into it, it's, it's to the point where if you still have optimism that he's going to be happy staying in Green Bay, that ship has sailed. And he just let us know that with this interview. Um, he, he let us know that it wasn't about Jordan Love. It was an issue with the front office that's been brewing for a while now. And so the situation, the, the question is, are you now willing to trade him? He alluded to them, um, try, the front office trying to push him out the door sooner, uh, I believe a few years ago. And then he goes out and has an MVP season and that throws a whole monkey wrench in the whole plan. And so now it's to the point where they, they had to keep him for the benefit of them and their organization, but he's still unhappy. And so at a certain point, everybody is going to be unhappy. And the only way to make both sides happy is to go ahead and uh, separate and go your separate ways. Um, if you were going to release him a few years ago, at this point, you still may as well go ahead and work that trade out because that's the only way that Aaron Rodgers is going to be happy. That's the only way you're going to get rid of the, the media circus that you have going on right now. When I look at the comments from Aaron Rodgers, it was very surprising to know it wasn't anybody that's really on the field during the games. It wasn't the coaches. It wasn't the players. It's straight upper management. And that's crazy. Like, you, you really think, it's, oh, I hate the coach. Oh, I hate the guys I'm playing with. But it was straight up the culture and the management is messing up. And it's really sad to see because there's so many organizations that don't have the money, don't have the resources to really just have a chance at the Super Bowl. Like, there's so many organizations you see all the time in, in this Americanized sports leagues where it's, you know, there's no real, like, the way it's constructed is very hard for these smaller teams to win sometimes. And I think it's very sad that the Green Bay Packers didn't realize what they had when they had it. And it's very easy to say, what do you want me to do once you've messed up a billion times? It's very easy. You're vulnerable now. Of course you're going to do that. You hated on me. Now, 
Now the gun's at your head. Of course you're going to beg for your life. And so I think the, the Packers, they messed up. And now you have Jordan Love. And obviously Jordan Love isn't that good. Because if Jordan Love was good, we'd be hearing about it. And we're not Let's hearing get about to it. it. Let's get to Let's it, Jamar. That, that, that's on, my brother. point. Get, let's that's, get that's to it. That's my point. And that's my. We can talk about Aaron Rodgers all day. Okay. But this, let's this get is to a, it. This is a, when we're talking about the Green Bay organization, it's about Jordan Love. And if Jordan Love was actually good, if Jordan Love was actually good, and you messed up this bad with Aaron Rodgers, you already got your plan B. If he was really that good, he's not it, Aaron Rodgers. One before I even get to that, I'm not on the team. Don't get it twisted because we talked about this before. I'm not on Team Green Bay. Screwed up. Aaron Rodgers did not have an MVP season two years ago. He did not have an MVP season three years ago. When they drafted Jordan Love, Aaron Rodgers was coming off of, of throwing the two least amount of touchdowns in a season he ever has in a season where he played the, the whole season. There were, there were things saying that Aaron Rodgers might not be the same anymore, and you covered your butt. Because look at the New Orleans Saints. We're sitting here talking about, dang, I don't know if Jameis, I don't know if Taysom. They didn't want to be in a position like that. Because as an organization, it's not just about the present, it's about the future. However, let's get to Jordan Love. How good does Jordan Love really need to be for you to be comfortable replacing the reigning MVP? I'm, let's just be honest. Aaron Rodgers came out there and played out of his mind last year. I don't care. Andrew, he had to be Andrew Luck. Love would have to be Andrew Luck for you to be comfortable and say, you know what? All right, I'm going to cut bait with you. There was no, re there was no uh, preseason. He didn't get to play in a regular season because why would he? We've never seen him in an actual game, let alone a, an exhibition game. And you want me to be comfortable? He was already somewhat of a project player. This is not so much about Jordan Love. I don't know how good Jordan Love is. And I don't think they know either. But I can tell you right now, Jordan Love would have to be Patrick Mahomes in his first year for me think he has that in him for me to be comfortable getting rid of the reigning MVP. We're so many talking about Jordan Love. How about how good Rodgers was? Are you comfortable replacing that? What would Jordan Love need to be for you two to replace Rodgers comfortably? And be like, you know what? I ain't even worried about it. I got Jordan Love. He would need to be what you said he would need to be. But the thing is, if you know that, why are you sending Aaron Rodgers through that type of ringer? What, what do you if mean? If you know that Jordan Love, if you know that Jordan Love needs to be the likes of Andrew Luck or something like that, and you have Aaron Rodgers on your roster already, why are you giving any Aaron Rodgers the trouble that you're giving him? He's Instead of keeping him happy until you can get to a position to where Jordan Love can be They there. aren't. They aren't sending him through the ring. The ringer was drafting Jordan Love. After that, he went on to have an MVP season. They offered him a restructured contract, offered him an extension. He was not happy because of that monkey wrench he threw. They're no longer doing anything. If Aaron Rodgers would have came in and played like he played in 2019, quite possibly maybe, not saying it, it would have happened, but maybe we would see Jordan Love in 2021. But here's the thing. What are they doing to him that is so bad? They've constructed a team that has made it to the NFC Championship two games in a row. They've had a bad defense. What do they do? They go to try to invest in getting a better defense. Kevin King was getting torched in the, in the NFC Championship game. What do they do? Say, you know what? We need to have a cornerback that goes on the other side of Jair. They put him with a bunch of talented up, uh, guys up front. We can talk about them not having wide receivers these last couple of years, but I don't want to hear about that first round stuff because Devontae Adams, Jordy Nelson, Randall Cobb, all of these people, they have provided Aaron Rodgers with a good enough team to win. That's what the GM is supposed to do. Is it, I have Gronk, Godwin, uh, Antonio Brown, Mike Evans, AJ, uh, I mean, OJ Howard, Cameron Brake, Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones. No, but let's be honest. Stop using the exception as the standard because that's not what most teams have. They've given Aaron Rodgers a good enough team to win. And I'm not faulting him for not winning, but we have to stop saying it as if they just given this man uh, Toledo. No offense to Toledo, but they're not competing with nobody in the NFL. That's not what this is. This is a top team. You remove Aaron Rodgers and put another high-level quarterback in there, they are still a very good team. And that's what represents having a quality squad when your quarterback is not what makes you. But I think when it comes down to me is you were the one who draw the line in the sand. It wasn't Aaron Rodgers. You drew the line. You're the one who was being a little sketchy. You're the one who got Jordan Love. So keep that same energy. That's my point. And when Jordan it when it, it bad when you picked it though, it was it's crazy in hindsight. 
But, when it but there were so many receivers available that they could have got. There were so many receivers they could have got. I feel like that would just play spin in the face, in my opinion. They could have and got when you, players for now. For that's now. what I'm saying. Was, and, and look, look, Darren, here's my point, though. When it comes to, you know, trading superstars, and I like to compare across sports, we look at like a James Harden, Anthony Davis. I know it's different sports, but at the end of the day, if you're going to end up trading them, you better, you better trade them now and get your value. And I understand that, yo, Jordan Love isn't going to be Aaron Rodgers, but think about Jordan Love plus the insane coup you're going to get from Aaron Rodgers. What is that all match up, put some play together? What is all that value up to? And the longer you wait ah, after angry. the draft and other things happen, that value is going to become smaller and smaller because now there's less picks to trade and now there's less teams that need a quarterback. And so when you wait this long, we, we talk about all these things. So all these things with all these acquisitions and free agency, it's the timing of things. And now, how many teams are going to trade for Aaron Rodgers? The same the market that would have traded a week no, ago. No, no. How about all that teams that pick quarterbacks in the draft? All those teams are no longer pick- – the, the Chicago Bears would have gladly gave up their whole franchise for Aaron Rodgers. You talking about Aaron like, Rodgers and the, the Bears? Like they were really going to trade him to the Bears? I'm, I'm just saying in general. I'm just saying in general. There's all these teams that need quarterbacks that have already made moves, now they can't go out and get them. So now your asking price is lower because there's lower demand. How many and, teams and just, really got knocked off? How many teams really think got knocked off? Plenty. How many quarterbacks were picked this year? So you, you think they were going to trade them to the – I don't think they were going to trade them to the Patriots. I don't think that was going to happen. I'm, I'm just saying. Let's, in let's go through the teams. The Miami, still on the board. You can still trade them to Miami. Can you really? What changed? Can you really? What changed? I, Miami would have traded Tua for maybe Deshaun, a younger player, but they wouldn't have traded and went, went for an old nope, age. You I don't can still trade him to Denver if you want to. That's no, true. you can't trade him to San Francisco they're, they're, they're anymore. They're on the board. You can't, you can't go to Tra- San Francisco. They would have yeah, gladly gave up. It's not that you still L- have a LA market. Would have, All right, LA let's act like right now on this day Stafford. that Aaron Rodgers won't he, – he, there's no market for Aaron Rodgers. I'm not saying there's no market. All I'm saying is it's not the same. It's, that's all I'm saying. There's a lot of teams that would take Aaron Rodgers right fact. now. And it's here's the thing. The you it's are like, like Darren. Darren, oh, think about how think Jordan big of that good. They, no, think, think about Jordan, how big on, of y'all. a story it was. Think about how big of a story it was. All teams need quarterback. That was the story of this season. All these teams need Why quarterback. Why am I willing all these to just available. give him up? Maybe I don't want to give him up. Y'all ever think that maybe I want to try to make but, him up? But, but Darren, my point is, I agree with you. I don't want to give up Aaron Rodgers. But then don't draft Jordan Love in the first place. That's all Jordan, I got. Hold on, hold on. Y'all are, see, here's the thing. This is the funny thing about hindsight. Is people are acting like Aaron Rodgers had an MVP season in 2019, and then they drafted Jordan Love. Like, they, that's see, how I people are saying. acting like it happened. And it did. Still Aaron Rodgers. When still people, Aaron Rodgers. No, it's not. It's not. It's, it's, so it's really not. They were trying to want to force him out. They were giving up on Aaron Rodgers. They were giving up on him saying, hey, he's likely to. He's about Jordan to Love was forward. a project player when he was picked. I don't even think Jordan Love was going to be ready for two years after being selected. Aaron Rodgers came out and had an MVP season. They offered him security. They offered they offered a vote of confidence to him because, hey, I was wrong. I thought you were going to be bad. I thought you were done. You don't seem to be done. Let me give you more money and more security. Who wants hey, I, can't, I, I, I got a question, though. I got a question, though, Darren. I got a question, though, Darren. What is the goal of, of an NFL team? What, what is win it a Super Bowl. To win a Super Bowl. And when you're in position, what do you often see teams do? They will sell their future to get one of them. They will sell I their future. I New Orleans Saints do it for five years and not win a Super Bowl. Okay. Okay. But all I'm saying is when there's I watch the Rams do it too and not win a Super Bowl. So you're just supposed to just be good and always buy future and never win it? I didn't know, I didn't know that. I didn't know that drafting a quarterback to hopefully succeed you just meant you couldn't be good. They made it, but, but just imagine Green Bay with another another top receiver on that team. Just just imagine Listen, MBS last, not dropping passes every two plays. Last year, they put their faith in Alan Lazard getting better. Do I think Alan Lazard is a good number two? He no, I good. think he's a I think he's a below he's average number, number two. I think he's a really good number three. But they put their faith in having a team that they they put their faith in having a wide receiving in a team that would continue to to develop. And all it resulted in was Aaron Rodgers winning the MVP. He ain't throw the ball to himself. He ain't catching himself. He ain't make the own plays. He's a phenomenal player. But I'm tired of people acting as if Brian Gutekunst has just done a terrible job building a team. And he has not. This team is good. 
Aaron, like this team is really good. And it's not just about being good. This team is great, guys. They have holes that exist. And they built it up. They're giving him a top offensive line. They're giving him a top wide receiver. They're giving him a top cornerback. They tried to give him a, a top pass rushing duo. Like, they have invested in other parts of the team. And I understand that Aaron Rodgers does not throw the defensive ends, but defensive ends are important, too. Okay, we're going to have to disagree on this one, Darian. It's, it's been a nice little my point. I guess so, here, y'all, man. Discussion. Y'all, just wanna, but, y'all just want Aaron but, Rodgers to be, have everything in the world the same way Tom Brady did. And I but see in it. the great words of Ricky Bobby, if you ain't first, you're last. And that's all I got. Tell us what you think in the comment section. We'll see you all next time at SOS Session.